the lecture. So <clears throat> yesterday we were speaking about usability testing and standard, sort of standard questionnaire for post-test. We have seen, um, just to remind you, the uh, post-task questionnaire that is a single ease question because it's important that if you have a questionnaire for each task, this questionnaire should be as short and quick and simple as possible because otherwise you interrupt the flow. And this is one of the, let's say, most common, there are not many post-task questionnaire. This is one of the, of the few that there are, and it's one of the, it's, it's quite common and it's reliable, valid, and sensitive to evaluate the single task. Uh, and then we have seen a post-test questionnaire that is widely used, highly reliable, that measure the um, perceived usability of a system in a generic perspective. And this is a post-test questionnaire that is the system usability scale. And we have seen which are the questions and how to calculate the score of the uh, system usability um, uh, questionnaire and some advantages and disadvantages, including the fact that it's not diagnostic and it's a subjective measure of the perceived usability and it's not possible to make comparison between two results of the system usability scale. So it should not be your only method, your only measure to see how you can improve the, your system for uh, you, an under usability perspective. And then we stop here saying there is another questionnaire that is um, a post-test questionnaire. That is the, the NASA um, task load index. That is a 9080 questionnaire that's, as the name said, um, is created by NASA, the National American Aerospace um, Agency, uh, with a specific goal that is to measure the perceived workload under many perspectives are required by clearly in that in that context, aerospace crew members. So aerospace crew members needs to do a, a lot of tasks that are complex and most of the case highly technical and can also create problem if done not, not properly. And so this is a questionnaire, a validated questionnaire that um, try to understand, try to measure the workload, the mental and physical and emotional workload of a person. So while this is started in the aerospace area, is now used for studying complex product and task in every high consequence environment. So clearly aerospace, but also military, but also healthcare, where an error of doctors in some specific occasion can bring consequences that are not simple, not trivial. So if you are just interested in perceived usability, the system usability scale is a good candidate for a post-test questionnaire. But if you want to measure the workload, the effort in many different aspects on using a system, whatever system, the NASA TLX questionnaire is uh, another kind of questionnaire. And it has six questions. Uh, it's way more complicated than the system usability scale. It has six questions on a 21 point scale without labels. So compare that with a 10 question on a seven point scale. These are six questions, so less questions, but with a way larger uh, point scale, ranging again from very low to very high. And these six questions um, focus on one dimension of the workload, many dimension, mental demand, physical demand, time pressure, s perceived success with the task, overall effort level and frustration. So everything that is related to the workload in doing a series of tasks is measured by the NASA TLX questionnaire. And respondents need to weigh each one of the question to in just six category and also indicate which mattered most on what they are doing. Because if the task is uh, mostly mental, clearly the, the, the physical demand cannot be, is not significant because it's not a physical demanding task, it's just a mental task. 
uh, or if you have no time pressure, because it's something you can do in a large amount of times, cl clearly the time pressure is not fundamental there. But other dimension can be. So you have the six question, you have to weight the six question according to what is the activities you are doing in that moment during the evaluation that precede the, the questionnaire. And it's also very complex to score. So differently from the system visibility scale that has this five minus the score you get or the score you get minus five uh, and then multiply so, some everything and multiply for 2.5, here you, you need instructions. And so if you ever, I, in, in this course for your project, there is no project that will need to measure the workload of, um, of the application. Uh, and we are asking you to focus on disability specifically the workload could be one dimension of that but clearly not in our case so uh, this is not probably a tool that you want to to use or adopt now but it may happen to be in high complicated uh, high consequence environment so this questionnaire is is actually very good for those specific moments and uh, i was saying that is a complex instrument to score uh, so there is an official paper and pencil version to computer score provided by the NASA itself. And also there is uh, an iOS application to computer score automatically. Uh, I think the same provided by the, the, the NASA, NASA uh, agency as, uh, as well. Uh, there is no, as far as no Android application to computer score, so either you do it on paper and pencil or with instruction, and it's like multiple pages of instruction to do that and do that properly. Hmm? Because it's 21, uh, it's a scale of 21 points, so you have multiple factors to, to consider. And so these are <clears throat> the three questionnaires I want, we wanted to, to show you. The post task and the two post tests Questionnaire that are again the standard questionnaire and then if you want, if you need, you can create your own post-test or post-task questionnaire with those criteria in mind that for post-task, as I was saying, you need to keep it short and quick and simple and maybe not used for all tasks but just for some of them. Instead for, for the post-test, if you want to use the system visibility scale or the NASA questionnaire for workload, if you need to, to measure workload, you can also create your own version of the questionnaire to get information that you need for maybe your specific application. Mm -hmm. But this standard questionnaire are a good way to start and to collect information in a common and standard and recognized and reliable way. Uh, then the slides, I will not open these, but um, these slides show, includes two links for two sample scripts. Um, to, to have a look at them. Well, actually, I should, because we didn't uh, cover the scripts. So let me just open the first one. So this is a sample script. There is, uh, we were saying that you have to plan everything. So you will need to, just a reminder for what we, we said yesterday, you will need to decide on the participants, you need to decide on your role, you need to decide on your artifacts, the equipment, uh, the questionnaire, if you any, the task that you want to, the person to do, and then recruit the people, and then write a script, uh, instruction, step-by-step -step instruction that you read, the facilitator read, to each participant to ensure that everyone get exactly the same information. And there is no information provided to one person that is not provided to another. So there are no standard way to create scripts so here there are two examples and in the Google Doc we will use in a while to start at least uh, an exercise in creating the, the uh, usability testing session there is another starting of a, of a script. But basically the script is um, you know, information like information for the facilitator to provide, like welcome, uh, meet participant and introduce to observer. So there is not specific instruction on what to say, but it's clearly what you have to do. You have to welcome a person and introduce 
this is observer 1 and this is observer 2 and they will observe you while doing the test. It's a reminder of the step. And then in this case it's just four reminder but th this could also be written in a longer form like which is the purpose of this of this test. The purpose is testing a website and the purpose is testing a website not you. Hmm? So in all usability testing you are testing something not someone and this is important to say so that the person uh, doesn't feel like incompetent or not capable to do something because maybe because surely the problem is in the application not in how the person use it and then recording you so we are recording you yeah you're fine with recording and then there are questions etc and then there should be the actual testing and this mix uh, and this this uh, script mix what the tester is going to say with some reminder for uh, themselves. So start recording is not something that the facilitator is going to say, it's something that the facilitator needs to do. Start the recording. At that moment is where the recording should start. And so and then start with what they say task one. Uh, that is quick look. Some, in some cases the usability testing start with a quick look. I will give you a few minutes to look around and familiarize yourself with the application freely and then you will come back. Hmm? Um, so in this case they decided to, to do this and quick look, I'm going to show you the home page of website and this is what the facilitators say exactly to everyone. I'm going to show you the home page of a website, you can look for a few seconds only and then I will ask you some question. At this stage don't click, just look. Okay, and then the participants say yes, look at the page for 5-10 seconds and after 5-10 seconds the facilitator say okay, stop looking, thank you and ask these two questions. What's your first impression and what, who do you think it is for? And then there is a second look, in this case that is not very common but depends, it was very short, uh, quick look um, with other question. And then there is um, <coughs> the adoption of the thinking aloud methodology for all the other tasks. In this case, the thinking aloud methodology is used for all the other tasks from um, task 3 onwards, uh, but it's not mandatory. As I was saying yesterday, thinking aloud can be applied for a single task if needed. Uh, so you don't need to, to apply them for all the tasks. In this case, they decide to to apply that, so the first things that the facilitator is doing is explaining what is think aloud. So for the rest of the task, you will need to think aloud. That is, you must tell me what you're thinking. It will feel strange, but it's very important. I'm not going to show you what I mean for think aloud. I will use another example uh, for another website for this example. Here we go, and then open the direct gov driving license and does an example of thinking aloud. And then there is navigating from the home page and the instruction that the facilitator gives verbatim to the participants. We are going to start at the university home page. Your task is to find the careers page within the LC site. Uh, remember to say what you think, please start. And then, and, and again, there is instruction for the facilitator like I need to be sure that the browser is to the home page and not to any other random page because probably before could be other things and then there are other tasks and it's not complete like task x is actually not not a task and then uh, there are some post test question questions so there is a short questionnaire post test in this case not not standard one just uh, for them and then stop recording and then thank you many thanks you're really helpful and show them out and then there is a review session with observer so they decide to just have a debriefing session without the participant but only with the observers and this is one one example and here there is another example no it cannot be the same 
sensible. Okay, clearly this link is not working. I will fix it. Um, so let's say this was a website. Here you have two um, different kind of scripts, one for a website, one for a mobile application. Let's have a look at the mobile application since the other one was um, a website. So again, there are instructions for the facilitator, the mobile device should be open to something neutral like the device home screen. And here there is a full script that is way more common. Having a full script like this. Hi, name of the participant. My name is name of the facilitator. I'm going to be walking you through this session today. Before we begin, I have some information with you. All the things exactly that the person, the facilitator is telling the participant to go through the task. So this is a script. You see, it's, it's actually a, a script and you can recognize some common idea, uh, some common things as before, like the first things I want to make clear right away is that we are testing the app, not you. This is very, very common. And so it's expected that you say, uh, you say that and this personality, you can do anything wrong here. Um, you don't be worried to make mistakes and there is explanation with his think aloud. So this person explain with his think aloud and in some cases say, okay, now you have to think aloud or in another case, no. And there is any question, there is the permission to record the screen, the conversation, and then the recording permission form and when they sign it, start the screen record on the laptop. So again, instruction for, for itself, opportunity to, to ask questions, and then there are some questions. So there is a pre-test questionnaire that is custom in this case, and then as before, the task. Uh, in this case, there is a scenario, and again, instruction, and so on. Wrapping up, this is not complete. These are not complete, they are not all the tasks, but just um, some of them to exemplify hmm? how it's going to, to work. And we say yesterday the tasks typically are between five and ten tasks for, um, let's say, average uh, application. Uh, let me fix the, I, the link now so that, and now let me check that they didn't broke this. say not complete. And then I will play, up, upload a new version of the slides. So in the planning is the creation of scripts is something you, you should do as well. And then you should use the, the scripts. So run and analyze. So planning was step number one. That is actually the most, the longest and most complicated uh, step and the second and the third step were run and analyzing. How you run the usability testing? Very simple. You have a script, you follow the script. So you follow what you plan. So the first step is get informed, welcome the person, decide who is the facilitator, etc. And then you get informed consent, so permission to continue with the test, better in written format, and with an explicit acknowledge that. Uh, everything is understandable, understood, and the person can proceed. Then you tell participant, again, we are testing our app, we are testing our website, we are testing our whatever, not you. Any mistakes are the app fault, not yours. And this is important to say, uh, to set the stage correctly. <clears throat> the facilitator should always follow the script, remaining neutral, not helping the participants, and providing clear instruction. Uh, tasks can be given in a written form. You can have tasks on a piece of paper, given one at a time, or vocally, as you prefer. But tasks should be given one at a time, not all together. Clearly, the facilitator have all of them. But uh, it's given to the participant one at a time. The participant is doing the task, and then after, you proceed with another task. 
the facilitator must encourage participants to adopt and explain the chosen methodology at the right moment, so how the Think Aloud work and for which task you want to use it, for all of them, for some of them, etc. And note takers, observer, take notes of the behavior, of the comments, of the errors, the completion of each task. We said yesterday there are critical and non-critical errors, so maybe you want to keep track of the non-critical errors. Maybe to, to reach a page, some participant click five different links before reaching the right one. So eventually the task is completed and the right page is uh, open it. But in the meantime, the path to reach that page is something totally unexpected. So this is something you want to keep track to understand why this uh, path that in your opinion was very simple click there actually created such confusion to, to generate seven different links so that you can amend the application if needed. Um, and clearly to run visibility uh, testing, the system is ready to measure all the defined criteria. So if you have some criteria that has task completion, it's more about people, but if you want to, again, as I said yesterday, if you want to measure time, maybe you want to instrument the computer to measure time for completing a task instead of keeping track manually of the time elapsed. And this is running, so you do all of this for one participant and then start again with the second participant and then start again with the third, the fourth, the fifth, etc. And the end, again, you can choose, as I said yesterday, to have the debriefing session in the end, uh, typically with participants. So you welcome, you say thank you, this is the completed, this is a post questionnaire task, the questionnaire, and you can, um, you can fill out and then maybe you want to, to stop for a second with them to um, comment on the, what happened. So maybe again, this participant, instead of clicking straight on a link, just click on five different links before picking the right one. So maybe you want to understand why, and you can ask why in this case. So sort of short interview, inform, uh, unstructured interview in the end uh, to, get, to collect more feedback. Mm -hmm. Because again, usability testing is mostly about collecting information, collecting feedback about what's going on and what's working, what's not working. So any opportunity could be, could be used. So after running everything, you can analyze the data to find failures in the user interface and way to improve. And you can use the written notes, the audio if you're recording, the video if you screen recorded, the usage log. You can also instrument the application to, to memorize the clicks, the timing of the clicks, etc. to have the usage log, etc. cetera. Uh, considering the collected metric per task and overall, and you can then uh, summarize the success rate, the task time, the error rate. You can say that on average, ten, uh, all the participants had a success rate for task number one of 100%. So everybody completed the task number one. And on average, um, task number two was completed by 50% of the participants. So task number two is more complicated or has more issues with it. That, so this 50% that wasn't able to complete it should have some trouble in, in doing that. And same thing for questionnaire, you can calculate SUS for each person, then do an average for the entire um, application. So you get 68 for one person, 70 for another, 80 for the third participant, and again 68, and you can do an average for this four number. To, to have just one value for everybody. And you can also look for trends and keep count of problem that occurred across participants. Again, observation. Okay, again, the observer, the note taker. So this participant clicked five times before reaching the right page, and maybe this happened for another participant, and maybe this happened for another participant again. So that could be a sign that there is something not properly clear in that part of the application. Maybe it doesn't happen for everybody, but it happens more than once. That could be something to, to consider and to investigate and to understand better. Um, and that's it. Here there is a little bit of references. So <clears throat> if you don't have any questions about this. No? We can uh, use this hour that is left to <clears throat> 
to draft, uh, to start drafting a sample plan for something. And you can also use this as a sort of template. So here there are other samples. Uh, actually, this is the one that we have seen. This is uh, included in the slides we have seen yesterday about the task and the scenarios. And this is yet another, let me open it, um, <coughs> script. Or it was. It was another script. Or it's just AV and the internet connection is not supporting us. Who knows? Let's keep it there for a while. Uh, so these are three links or two uh, that are, again, similar as before or another example, if it's ever load. And then there are the categories we want to consider in planning. So the roles, who is doing the, um, not the tester, the facilitator. Uh, who will be the observer. So decide who in your group will be one or the other. And then you have to decide which is the target population, the age, expertise with something, use as a computer if relevant, any other attributes you want to consider for screening the participants before they start the experiment. The equipments, the requirements you need, the artifacts you need, and then the task. And for each task, the text of the task, the success criteria and the methodology, if any, that you want to use, the metrics you want to collect, and then in the end, the script. And you see here there is just a starting of a script, hi, I am, whatever, and today we are doing this testing for this application, and we are here to test the application, not you. <clears throat> Fill out this document to give us permission before starting the session, and then maybe there is a pre-test questionnaire, if any. Uh, and then there is this free exploration if you want, and then there is the reminder to start the recording if you are recording, etc. And this is the task number one, and you proceed in this way. So this is also um, a starting of, of a script. So what we are, nothing. Let's see if this PDF is broken. Yes, it is. Um, so what we are going to, to, to test, to draft uh, a simple plan. So let's use the Portal della Didattica as, as an example, since all of you know, know, the, know it. Even without looking, you probably know which, which could be the task that you can do with, with that. So <clears throat> let's keep the role. Um, target population, who could be the target population we want to, to investigate for testing the usability of the Portale della Didattica. This was a question for you, just in case. Uh -huh. Yeah, this could be either Polytechnical students or teachers, pick one. Let's do Polytechnical students because you don't know how we see the, the things. Okay, Polytechnical students. Uh, should we restrict it a little bit? It's like every protecting students or bachelor or master or PhD or engineering, architecture. We can, if we want, we can restrict, right? Because it depends what, which information we want to, to have. Like for the need finding, you, you can fix your target population. So? What would be more, let's say, interesting in this example 
to understand the usability of the portale from, okay, maybe there is no difference from, uh, or little difference between engineering and architecture, but there is probably a difference between bachelor and master or Erasmus students in how they approach the, the website. So, Why masters? Maybe they have uh, some knowledge of physics uh, uh, university website. So master already have some knowledge of university website. Bachelor typically have little knowledge. And Erasmus students have knowledge of university website, but not this one. So let's pick one. We said polytechnic students. So master. Master. Hmm? So we are ignoring bachelor students. So we are already getting people with some expertise on, let's say, terminology. So expertise with university terminology is good. Because we expect that from the population. But this is one criteria we are considering. So if you are a master student, but you don't have an idea what is a CFU, then you're out. You cannot be in the test. Uh, age. Master students cover two years. We want both years. We want just one. In theory, two years. But let's say, theoretically, two years. Um, we don't care. Let's say both year or three years, uh, which is the the expected age to start the master. In theory, always twenty-three, twenty-three, twenty-two, 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 nineteen, the first year. In theory, in theory, nineteen, the first year of the bachelor. 20, the second year, 21, the third year, so 22, the, fourth, the, the first year, so in theory, 22. Uh, up to, you cannot say 30. <laughs> <coughs> but let's say 24, no, 25, let's say 24. 25 is too much experience. Um, Then, which other kind of expertise we... So these are all criteria that we will need to, to consider in recruiting. So we go to a person say, okay, you are a master student, yes. Uh, you know what is credits, yes. You are 24 or 23 or 22, no, I'm sorry. Let's pick another one. And then if you come up with no people, then you, you will need to, to increase maybe the age range. Which other expertise we can uh, consider? Yes, uh, let's just step back. What we want to test on the portal, because clearly the portal is doing a lot of stuff, right? It's the secretary, the course, the the, the, the thesis and etc. So let's focus on teaching part. Courses, material, so let's also avoid the, teach, the, the, the teaching load, just the courses that you have to follow, to download material, to, to enroll in an exam for the courses. So let's focus on the teaching part, not on the secretary part or other parts, just the teaching part of the portal. So thinking the teaching plus exams plus that area, downloading material, reading news, etc. Which other kind of expertise we may need as prerequisite?
if, if we need any expertise. I mean, we can delete the role. It's not that we need to have three kind of Yeah, in this case, it could be reasonable, so yeah, let's just delete that. And are we going to show it on a computer or on a mobile application, or on a mobile phone? Computer. So we want some expertise with a computer. So usage computer should be good. Um, Let's try to make it, in this case, more quantitative, like uh, using a laptop, desktop, um, and a browser at least every day. It's a criteria. So you probably should think of a um, Engineering students is happen very frequently. If you think of computer engineer, even more, but maybe since we are just focusing on polytechnic or master's student student, maybe not, I don't know, maybe in some degrees you don't have this uh, frequent usage because maybe you, you draw or you do other kind of uh, co computations and, and so you don't use much. I don't know, but that could be one one criteria. And then if you came up with other expertise, you can add them to the list. Good. Uh, equipment. What we need to run the test? A laptop. Then? Yeah. Then? Do you want to record or not? Yes. Video or audio? Both. So with a camera or screen recording? Both. Both. So we need a camera, right? And um, let's say some screen recording software installed on the laptop and we need the browser because it's a website any other equipment we need hmm? that's a requirement not equipment yes we will need Okay, let's move to requirements. Um, so we need credential. Let's say we need uh, uh, probably a fake student account with, let's say, four courses, um, I don't know, three exams passed, and two exam, to uh, enroll to so you you need to describe what you expect to see in the portale when you log in and credential clearly to log in why a fake student account Yeah, why one fake student account? Can we have three different student account? Technically we can, but should we? No, no. why? So we can get the, 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 the 
yeah, we get all the information from the same source, everybody see the same thing in the same way and can do the same operation exactly and there is no difference between participants so that the study is replicable for all the participants and all the answers are coherent within the participants. So just we need one, in this case, account with the same three, four courses, the same three exam passes. And these are random numbers in this moment, but one can think, okay, how many courses do I need? According to the task, probably, maybe four is too much or it depends on, on the task we are going to, to, to write after. Uh, artifacts. Which artifacts do we need? Do we want a questionnaire? So we need the informed consent form. That's for sure. And we probably need pens if it's on paper. Do we want, so pens probably is more in the equipment, but anyway. Yeah, the recording is, which artifacts we need to prepare? We don't need to prepare the recording because we already said that we need a software. Do we want a questionnaire? Yes. A pre-test, a post-test, a post-task, post all of three, a subset of three. Okay, do we want a pre-test questionnaire to get some background information like your age and your degree? Um, because we said every student's master student polytechnical, so we don't know if it's uh, management engineering, computer engineering, design, um, architecture, whatever. So, yeah, we want a probably a pre test questionnaire uh, for um, getting background info. So that we, we also can maybe some, do some sort of correlation, like, oh, everybody, maybe, maybe we discover that everybody that uh, is in computer engineer do the same mistakes on the application or do the same path in the application. So maybe there is something in the application that is telling uh, these students uh, a different story than another degree, mm -hmm. students from another degree. Or all the 22 years old maybe do the same uh, things and the 24 maybe with a little bit more experience, do something different. So maybe these two years of experience make, make a difference. Or maybe the 22 years old coming from Polytechnico don't do things that the 22 years old coming from another university does it. So that could be information to, to know, to decide. Do we want a post-task questionnaire? the post-test. Do we want to use some standard questionnaire, like the system is a bit scale, or we want to draft it manually? Some, somebody else? Do you want a standard questionnaire? Yes. Any other artifacts? Okay, let's move on. Um, let's write some task, at least a couple. And then we, because we, we also need the matrix and the script, and we also need to decide uh, the briefing. Uh, yes, no. So do we want uh, the briefing session at the end of the task or at the test or no? Yes. So let's write a couple of tasks. 
So you are logged in with this fake account that has these four courses, three exam uh, done, and I don't remember how many uh, exam you can enroll in that moment. So in that moment, you have still the, co the courses open, but also you can, uh, like now, now you still have the courses and you can enroll in an exam for the next semester. Hmm? So you have the setup like you, you logged in here. So it could be one task, making it actionable and realistic. Then you can have a scenario, but that could be in the, in the script, which could be one task you want to, to know, to do, that is exemplifying one, let's say, common operation on the portale. Let's say on the teaching, always on the teaching part. Which is one operation you do on the portale? On the teaching part. Okay. Could be a task. Downloads the slides of a task. Let's make it more realistic and actionable. All, it, which, which slide? Any slide, the last one, the oldest one, the, which course? Any random course? A specific course? Doesn't matter. any slide from any courses. Which, is the, which are the advantages and disadvantages of this choice? Because there are. Or the disadvantages, if you want. Can you say that again, sorry? Yeah, for example, one disadvantage is that if you don't specify which slide, you don't know if it's just clicking randomly and loading something that happens to be the slides or understand maybe that the slides are ordered by date or by title or by so it's it's better in, for the slide to specify some criteria hmm? it could be a specific slide so download the slides entitled abc <coughs> or the first one the last the newest one the oldest one so it's it's always better to to restrain a little bit so you get more information and you can also see if the order is clear or, or not. So if I want to download the latest one and I scroll down, let's say I have many slides and I scroll down and maybe the latest one instead is the first one. Or maybe you have to read the date because they are ordered alphabetically. And so you, you want to have a more clear success criteria. Uh, so clearly for courses with materials, in it, because otherwise, if we just have one slide or no material, we cannot load the slide. So, which slide? The newest one. I'm telling that is, let's say, the human computer interaction course that doesn't have slides, but on the portal, but. Uh, why is why it's, I specify the name of course? Partially for the same reason, so that you can get if the person is speaking just randomly or, or not. 
but there is another reason for which it, it's, it's actually good to make it more actionable, in this case, more precise. Yes, there is this, uh, well, this idea is similar to the newest slide. So you need to first identify the course and then click on it and then go there and download, the, find the newest slide and download it. That's, that's for sure. But there is another, let's say, reason. So here we are just written one task, but we are expecting to write how many? No, here is written six, but we said the task should be between five and ten, right? So we need to need a, a bunch of tasks. And these tasks are in order. So after task one, you will need to do task two. And let's say that task two is something that you can do only in some of these four courses. Because maybe you didn't prepare all the four courses identically, on purpose, because maybe you want to explore something like in one course, you have, the, there is still the forum on the Portale? Yes, I think so, right? So let's imagine that you want to uh, do a task around the forum, but you didn't create the forum, fill out the forum for all the four courses, just one. So if the second task is about the forum, you should be sure that you are in the course that has the forum filled out. Otherwise, you will not be able to do the second task because you are in a course that doesn't have the forum. So also thinking that you have subsequent task immediately after. <clears throat> so in some cases it makes sense pick one course because I don't care because everybody is, everything is the same. In other cases it could be pick that specific course because the next task is still in the page of the course and so we follow up from there and maybe not all the courses have the same content available and so we can uh, immediately be in the right place. Hmm? So that's what, one reason. Uh, success criteria. And then here you can also list the critical errors um, for each task, but just let's write a note. Critical non for each task, something. So success criteria for this, how, when this task is successfully completed. The participants download the uh, right set of slides from the uh, human computer interaction course page. And do we want to use any methodology in this task? Methodology, nothing, think loud, collaborative, um, collaborative evaluation. <coughs> no, it's fine. Not all tasks need to have uh, so this is quite a simple task, so maybe you don't want to really understand something. Okay, let's write another task different from this one, just to make another example. So we can go outside of the page and we can do another task on exams. Which task we can do for an exam. So there is easy task, more complicated task. Mm -hmm. To what? You learned first available call. So that it's clear that it's the first available call. 
uh, of the human conduction exam. And then there will be a uh, success criteria, again. And do we want to do any methodology here? So, which is the success criteria? Yes, um, so the, let's say, the page, I think that when, what, what happens when you enroll to an exam? You get an email. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, <laughs> let's not go to another software. Um, so you are on the portal, you click on the exam name, and then what happens? Okay, you, you click on the, I mean, I imagine that you have a list of exams, you click on the name of the course, right? And what happened? You are automatically enrolled? No. What happens? I have no idea. So you click on the name, uh, pop up appears, and you ask for, your, for confirmation? Okay. So you, you ask for confirmation, and after you say yes, what happens? You this is okay. So the page, the table. In the page, uh, shows a uh, reserved, let's say reserved. A message uh, close to the exam name. So this is a success criteria. When it's reserved, so the other one is download because you have an artifact, so the the PDF, download it. Um, here you, you have a receipt, a confirmation, this uh, table. So this is the, the success criteria. Do we want to use some think aloud? Or yes, let's use think aloud here. So in this case, you will need aloud to explain what is think aloud if it's just in this task. <laughs> let's move on. Uh, matrix. Which matrix we want to collect? Mm -hmm. Time on task. For all the task? Yes, so, but we should consider that task number three will have a not accurate time on task because there is thing allowed. So we cannot say, oh, the exam needs one minute to, to book because people are speaking in the meantime. So that is not a realistic time. Hmm? Time and task should be avoided with think aloud. Other metrics. Yes, well, first, the easiest one, the um, success rate. We have a criteria for success, so. And then number of uh, errors. Which errors? No, the, the critical or the non-critical? Or both? And the success rate, do we want to consider like Boolean, so it's done or not done, or in a scale? Like you can do task one getting 70 instead of 100, or it's ever done or not done. Scale. From 0 to 100? Yes. And so you, you have here not non-critical errors, impact, deals, etc. Like, you can decide that in first task, Clicking on the wrong course um, could be a non first, and then going back and clicking on human interaction could be a, a non critical error, and then remove 10 points or 20. But you, you have a scale and you, you use that uh, coherently among the, the test. Uh, other metrics. What is the ease of use? How do you measure the ease of use? We need a questionnaire. 
to, to measure the ease of use. So either we add an artifacts or no, not the ease of use. And uh, we, we surely have the SUS score. Because we have the SUS questionnaire, so one metric is the SUS score for sure. Because we added that questionnaire. They select the standard, so we have another metric. Any other metrics? <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, so I don't know if I can speak for another 20 minutes. <clears throat> <coughs> like, dislikes. And under the, the briefing, you get other information. So you basically fill up this document entirely with all this detail that we just started to, to say. And uh, you have the script. Here, name of participant. This is not the thing, but it's the portale. And it, the start, the pretest question that we have, the, do we want this uh, explorative thing before starting, just look around the portale for three minutes. Yes or no? Yes, probably. I mean, we, we cannot know for sure, but that is a good probability. But if they are Polytechnic students, they will have used it anyway before, right? So, so in this case, given that they are Polytechnic students, probably you don't need to have them have a look at the portal because they already surely have seen it for, for once. Let's say maybe not those specific courses because they are made up. But, so this part, in this case, you can, for instance, remove it. Um, and so here you can write something, then restart the recording, and this is task one. And you can also prepare the task one with a scenario. So what could be the, the scenario for the student, this participant? What could be? for task one, or in general, for all the tasks. You're <clears throat> get picking uh, architecture students, 24 years old, and showing four courses, like human computer interaction, software engineering, computer architecture, and web application one and three exam passed, whatever. And so maybe you want to set the stage a little bit. Like you are a uh, second year, uh, MS computer engineer student. So there is not, not much background because they are already political students, but just to, to create the context. So you're second year because these courses are second year, you have exam already done, so you cannot be just started, or maybe you don't have exam done, and so you can say you are just a fresh enrolled student, just started in September, first year. But in this case, we have exams already done. So your second year, master degree, computer engineering students, um, and you log in on the uh, portale with the following credentials, because you, you need to give the credentials. Or you already present the page logged in. That could be another option. And you see your personal page on the portale after logging in. In this case, the scenario could be Simple because you have students examining something they already used. 
clearly if you don't have polytechnical students but you have Tell me another university not in Italy? The, the Lebanon University? <clears throat> you are coming from the Lebanon University. Uh, then maybe you need to provide more context in this scenario. Then not just this three line. Uh, but even if you are from University of Turin, then you need to provide maybe some more context because they use probably Moodle and not a custom made system so that should be is it more disorienting for them than for for a polytechnical student using uh, already the system mm -hmm. so you can have some and then um, for introducing task one you want so task one will become you want to download the latest, the newest, we said, slides for the etc. So this is task one. We just write it a little bit better to say maybe you want to and you are going to download this or please download this. So you set the stage and then after task one is completed you give task two etc 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 and in the end you have end recording give the questionnaire etc and other things so this is the script and then after you do the planning what the facilitator needs is basically the script doesn't need anything else the script and maybe the table with all the tasks just to have all the tasks together oh another things to decide is whether it could be an artifact whether you want to end out the task written or say it vocally. <coughs> written, so it's an artifact, you need all the task in separate pieces of paper. And if you do one session at a time, you just need, you have six tasks, you need six pieces of paper. If you do session in parallel, you need more. If you do two sessions in parallel, you need 12, because clearly you need double the material. So two laptops, two internet connection, two fake account, identical, but with different credential, because you need to replicate that in parallel. Okay, so this is what you, sort of, uh, and this is, again, not a strict uh, format. You can arrange it a little bit if you want, but this is what you are expected to, to also do for your uh, assignment for usability testing. Uh, so um, uh, my recommendation is to, tomorrow, tomorrow in the lab to uh, dedicate a little bit of time to start thinking on, to start planning your usability testing, especially in terms of the task, instead, especially in terms of equipment, you want to uh, measure time automatically on your application, or so how you, so here, how do we measure time? We had a time and task, how do we measure that? And then we need equipment, a stopwatch digital or not because we want to measure time another option would there be another option to measure time hmm? sorry from the screen recording so after you do measure time during you measure time after just stop the screen recording that could be another option another option is to instrument the portale to measure time so every when you start task number one, you have some, some way to say, okay, task number one is when I click here, and when I download, it stops the task number one. And so I measure automatically time. But this need to put in the software uh, some, some way to get this information and download this information in some kind of logs, to have some usage log with timestamp and do the computation of the time after. So there are options, clearly, 
but according to what you want to do, you need to some equipments or some way to, to actually uh, report that. And this is the planning. One thing that, <coughs> um, that happened quite frequently in the exam, in, in the group work, is that groups do a pretty decent planning, a pretty decent maybe uh, also execution, and then they forget to describe the results. Like, oh, we did the task, we did everything, done. No, you then need to say the results of the SAS score, the SUS, sc the SUS score for every participant, together. If you measure time on task, you should report what is the time on task for, so everything you measure, that should be reported as result in the report. And if you have a debriefing session, you should report what happened in this debriefing session, what you get as feedback from the debriefing session. So everything that you measure or you count for, they should be reported as a result after. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough to do that, but also you need to describe what you do, what you did, and the results of what, you, uh, what you're doing for all the participants individually and as a group when it makes sense. Okay? Just keep this in mind. Any questions? Okay, so we can stop here, also visibility testing. This is already linked on the website, so it's, it's already available to you all if you need it. Uh, as I was saying, um, yesterday, tomorrow we'll have the, the lab, on the high fidelity prototype again. Uh, I will do the first two sessions. So I will be in the digital well-being and in my own slot. And in the third one, it will be done by, uh, by Tommaso as, as usual. Um, since Alberto did my slot for a few times. So I need to, we need to recover the hours. And next Monday, we will dedicate, next Monday will be the last lecture. We will have a lab on Wednesday but the lecture will end on Monday, and the lecture will be about exams, rules and questions and how to prepare for exams, uh, for the exam presentation. And so if you have any question about the exam or any doubts, that is a wonderful moment to ask for those questions. Okay, so have a nice evening and see you tomorrow.